Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ Don't wish, what the, you, and don't wish for the kinds of favor and the kinds of preference Allah has given some people over other people. So what happens to you and I is we see somebody that has more money than we do, they have better appearance than we do, they have a nicer car than we do, they have a better maybe married life than we do, maybe they have, you know, better, some, some, sometimes I've even heard, even among siblings, my sister has better complexion than I do, she's more beautiful than I am. Uh, jealousy can take many forms. You could just envy somebody for what they have and become obsessed with why you don't have it. And it consumes you. And it could be the smallest thing, it could be the biggest thing. You know, it could be things like money and material things, it could be immaterial things, it could be even the, the love of a father or the love of a mother. Why does dad love this one so much? I never get that kind of attention. You know, she never blames him, she always blames me. She gets mad at me, but she's always nice to her. You know, there could be this, this kind of thing happens among siblings, you know. And parents sometimes don't help because they keep reminding one of them, he's smarter, why can't you be more like him? And, you know, create that jealousy even more inside a family. Allah Azza wa started here by saying, don't wish for what other people have been given by Allah Himself. There are preferences. In fact, there are people better looking than you and me. There are people smarter than us. There are people that are more knowledgeable. There are people that make more money. There are people in your family that get more appreciation than you do. It's a fact. That's just a fact. And sometimes it's clearly unfair. But in some of those things, it's simply Allah has opened a door of risk for them that He didn't open for you. And He opened other doors for you. But what happens for you is, you want the same things that somebody else has. Allah did not make you the same as anyone else. And Allah did not open the doors of provision, of rizq, for you that He opened for other people. Each of us has a unique set of opportunities. And we're gonna have to work hard to earn Allah's favor from within whatever we've been given, not comparing ourselves to anybody else. Before I get to the rest of this ayah and the positive reinforcement inside of this ayah, I want to share with you why this is a root cause for many major sins. As a matter of fact, the first grievous you know, rebellion against Allah that we know of in recorded history is the rebellion of Iblis, which is rooted in jealousy. That started, why, why does he get the attention? Wait, he's just made of clay. That's where that started. The first crime that ever took place on the earth, when humanity came on this earth, is the killing of Habil by his brother Qabil. That's also a matter of jealousy. This jealousy can be so heinous and so ugly that even when you are the son of a prophet named Yaqub and your brother himself is a remarkable child, who even if you don't know he has is not a prophet yet, has prophetic qualities. It can lead you to the point where you're even willing to kill your brother. What I'm trying to get at is jealousy and envy are not to be underestimated. They may seem like something going on inside of you or inside of me. It's just a feeling that I have. It's just an itch that I have literally, by the way, al-hasad is actually al-qishr, literally a peel and a scratch. They describe it as, a, as, a, as a, an insatiable itch inside of the heart like when some locust or bug bites your skin and you want to just keep scraping it. That, it's, a, it's this, and the more you scrape it the, worse it, the worse it gets. You're just supposed to ignore it and let it pass. The feeling may come, but you have to let it pass. That's actually what hasad is. You know, Al-Hasan rahimahullah ta'ala anhu said that I've never seen anybody who's a wrongdoer that looks more like the victim than someone who's jealous. You know, someone who's a wrongdoer has a victim. But in this case, the wrongdoer is the victim. That's what he says. He's the wrongdoer, he's doing jealousy, but he's the victim himself. This is why in one of the remarkable surahs of seeking Allah's protection, we seek protection of someone who acts jealously. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَد we, we, ask for, we ask refuge from the evil of the one who's envious, especially at the time that he's demonstrating his or her envy at that very moment. It's a very, very serious thing. It can lead to some very serious problems in my life and in yours. And I want to just count for myself and maybe refresh in my mind what kinds of blessings I may deprive myself of when I become a victim of jealousy. When I myself can't stop thinking about what somebody else has or what I wish somebody else had. And specific, just to be clear, 
It's actually tamanni zawal ni'mah li dunihi. You wish that somebody else no longer had it. You don't just wish, okay, this one is so, you know, so strong, I wish I was that strong. No, 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 no. I wish they get sick and I get strong. You, you want them to not have it anymore. Why did they have it? Why did they? I, I hope he gets fired. Not only, okay, he got a promotion. I hope I get a promotion one day. No, no, no. I hope he gets fired and I get a promotion. That's hasad. You want them to, you want to see them fail. Something in you just desires to see them come down. Which it adds to your risk in nothing. It doesn't add anything for you. But somehow inside of you, there's this feeling that if you can see them fail, or if you can see them suffer, it will make you feel better some, in some way. That's what hasad is. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in and don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.